Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore adding accessories to your character, accessorizing your characters. So we're going to talk about how you can add props to your character in composer mode to attach them as accessories to your character. In addition, we're also going to be linking separate bone hierarchies to your character and showing how you can do it that way as well. So on the screen right now we have uh, one of our elastic folks here, uh, side facing elastic folks. And we're going to start off by adding some simple accessories to him in composer mode. So what we want to do is go over here to composer mode. And once we're in, we're going to just basically uh, go to the content manager here and find some props. So the props I'm going to be using here are available for purchase from a separate content pack. Just keep that in mind. The G3 accessories, uh, fun stuff, uh, work tools rather right here. And we have elastic folks. And there's stuff like crutches and uh, glasses and uh, plaster casts. So we're going to make this guy look as if he's had some sort of, uh, you know, crazy snowboarding accident or something by putting some casts on him. Now, the first thing you want to note is that you want to make sure you have your uh, bone selected that you're going to add your accessory to. So right now they're props, but as soon as we add them, on, add them onto the characters, they're going to become accessories. So this plaster cast, I want to add to the left, uh, th or left uh, calf here or shank or whatever you call it. All right. So let's go ahead and click this uh, with the left shank selected. We can just double click this plaster cast and that's going to add that cast to that bone. Okay. It's very important that you do that. Otherwise it may go off on a tangent and just, uh, um, you know, not animate properly when you do apply some animations to it. All right. So let's go ahead and resize that, just position it right there and we're good to go. All right. Let's go ahead and add another, uh, plaster cast right here. Now you can also just click and drag it over to the bone. You can see it highlights in green. You can also do it that way. So I'm just going to add this to my character's left arm there and just uh, reposition it somewhere like this. We can rotate it slightly. Maybe resize it a little bit uh, larger. Just kind of put it in a position where it looks like it's, you know, uh, around the character's neck there. All right, we'll just go ahead and work with that. And finally, we're going to use a crutch as well. So there's a crutch up here, and I'm just going to click and drag this crutch onto my character's right arm, okay? Now, this one's a little bit different. You can see that when we move this down into position, it's going to be in front of the body, which we don't want it to be. We want it to actually be behind the body, but in front of the right arm. So to modify that, we need to go into the layer manager over here. And you can see all of our character's hierarchy uh, in the layer manager. Now to simplify things, I'm just going to minimize them all here. You can see that uh, we can use these uh, little twirly things to minimize uh, each bone hierarchy. We don't need to worry about the uh, sub bones right now at this time. We'll just kind of minimize all these just to get them out of the way. And it's easier to move things around in the layer uh, section there as well. So the crutch on the top here, we want to move this behind the torso and behind the right thigh. Okay, so I'm going to click and drag the crutch. Uh, make sure we have the right one selected here. There you go. Click and drag the crutch, and we're going to move it behind the hip layer right here, behind the foot layer, and behind the thigh layer, as well as behind the uh, hand layer. Okay, so when we place it right there, you can see uh, we don't want it to be behind the hand layer actually because that doesn't really make sense in that position right there. But we do have it in the correct position other than that. So we can just go ahead and click and drag it above the hand layer and the right arm and hand. All right, so everything is good. The other two can remain on top, and I think we have some good positioning. All right, so let's go back into stage mode now that we have already uh, applied all of our accessories. And we're going to apply a quick animation to our character. So let's go to the Content Manager here and to the uh, Animation tab and in Motions. We have some G3 Human Motion Smooth Move. Again, this is available from a separate content pack. And uh, Elastic Motions, or Elastic Folks from the side there. And we're going to go to Move. And there is a walking with a crutch uh, motion right here. We can apply to our character. You can see, all right, everything is looking okay. Let's press F3 and go into the timeline. Go into our motion track here. And let's loop this a few times just so we can get a better look at it here. All right, so we have our uh, dude walking. And, you know, we can reposition everything as well. If uh, the cast is in the wrong position, for example, we can just click that and we can alter the position right here. Uh, just need to move it about right there, I think should be good. Yeah, I'm not going to be too picky right here, but uh, I think that should be okay right there. And obviously the uh, crutch needs to be repositioned as well. So let's select the crutch and let's move it over into the correct position. So when you apply animations, the uh, accessories may 
change a little bit their position. So let's keep the crutch right about there. That should be good. And then we can play back. And there's our dude walking with the crutch after a terrible accident. We can put a you know, kind of a sad expression on his face as well if we want by going into the uh, facial key editor here and going to templates. Choosing a sad template. Let's give him something like this. All right. So now he's looking a little bit uh, more upset that he's injured instead of being a happy, happy dude. All right, so that's how you can really easily add accessories to your character in composer mode. Now, once you've uh, once you've added these accessories and you want to add them permanently to your character, then you can save your character with these accessories, again, by going to Actor and Custom up here, Custom Character, and you can see I've already saved it in a demo before, and I'm going to just add a, uh, this character here, and we can call him uh, Crippled Dude 2, since I have Crippled Dude 1. Crippled Dude 2. All right, and then you can just uh, you know click and drag him onto your scene, and he will apply the exact same way. And then we can go ahead and apply that same animation to him as well. Uh, where is it here? Move, walking with crutch. There we go. And then apply that to him as well. There you go. Again, we need to reposition that crutch, but uh, we know how to do that already. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, just delete this character right here. Let's delete his. Uh, unhappy pal as well. And let's talk a little bit about how to link a G3 spine bone to your character. So let's go into the actor tab over here and with uh, the templates here, let's add in another uh, G3 human here. The We're going to add a different guy this time. This guy with the uh, funky Hawaiian shirt. So what we're going to be doing here is actually attaching a separate character to the character we have on the screen here. So let's go over to G3 spine and you can see we have a tiger tail. Now it's not actually a character per se, but it, is, it does have a bone hierarchy. Uh, and it is a G3 spine. You can you know, call it a character if it was a snake or something. You can see these penguins and the caterpillars have the same hierarchy there. Let's just click and drag in this tiger tail. We can apply it to our uh, dude right here. Now let's compare this to our spine motion bone right here. If you click and drag this in as well, let's just kind of resize it to make it a little bit smaller. And let's zoom in here. Let's take a look at the bone hierarchy of these two by going into the motion key editor here. You can see we have the bone hierarchy that starts from here. This is the root position and goes up here. And the tiger tail has the same thing. There's a uh, root right here and a bone hierarchy that stretches up so you can animate it. Okay, let's go ahead and just delete this motion bone right now just so you know. Now we can't attach this uh, to our character in composer mode. Instead, we're going to link it to our character using this link function up here. So now you can apply the animation to your uh, to your G3 spine bone first, or you can you know position your prop if you want to as well. I prefer just you know position it properly first, and you know we'll bring it over here. Let's bring it a little bit further back on the Z axis by using this little doodad right here, and you know we'll place it you know wherever a tail might be somewhere like this I think. Okay, and then what we want to do is make sure we link this tail to the hip bone right here, the green hip bone. All right. So now if we move our character around, the tail is now linked to the character uh, until you unlink it. All right. So uh, with that said, we can select our uh, G3 spine bone and we have separate animations for this spine bone itself. So let's go over here to animations and in the G3 spine under special in the special folder here, we have some that are mainly used for tails, such as, you know, tail wag one, tail wag two and tail wag three. Let's use a uh, tail wag three here. And you can see it goes over to the wrong position. So all we need to do in that case is just go back to frame one and position it right over here. And then we can play back and it'll be like that. Now you can, of course, you know, uh, play this animation first and then uh, adjust it. But uh, this is just the way I prefer to do it. All right, so let's press F3 and go into the timeline here with the tiger tail selected. Let's go to our motion track right here. Uh, make sure you have object related track selected, by the way, and that'll open open the tracks for any object you have selected. So let's take our tail wag here. We can just loop it a few times, do, 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 and we can have our character, you know, a nice smooth uh, tiger tail loop right there. Okay, so that's how you can, uh, you know, attach a G3 spine, essentially another character, uh, link it to your main character and animate them both. Let's talk about how to attach or how to link animated props to your character. So let's go back onto uh, props here and under uh, G3 uh, fun stuff, I believe uh, over here, we have uh, entertainment 
and oh no, party rather. And there's antlers, balloons, all kinds of stuff you can add to your character. I'm going to add a couple of uh, tiger uh, things to the character, tiger whiskers. All right, so these are animatable props you can see by the Annie in the top left-hand corner there. Let's click and drag these whiskers onto our character and just kind of resize them, reposition them wherever we think the whiskers should be, and then make sure we link it to our character. So link, and we'll just link it to the head. Okay, so then if we move our character, do, 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 the whiskers are there. So let's take our tiger ears as well and throw those onto the character, and we can, you know, resize and reposition those wherever we'd like on his head. Maybe a little bit smaller there. We can move them back on the z-axis as well. There we go. So now we have these uh, cute little tiger ears. And if we have, if we select our character right now, let's play an animation to him. I'm just going to show you what happens if you don't link them. Uh, say have our character select, go to animation, and let's just go to uh, um, G3 human right here. We have a basic walk, uh, elastic folks side, and move. We can use a basic uh, walk animation here. Uh, walk to, to L is loop. L stands for loop there. So let's just apply that to our character. You can see we can, you know, apply that as many times as we want. And he'll just keep on walking. All right. We can press F3 and loop it that way as well. If we have object related track selected, go to our motion tab there and loop that a few more times. All right. So we'll close that down. And you can see now, uh, pay attention to the ears the ears are not attached to our character. So we need to, again, reposition those and link them. I think that should be good. And link to our head. All right, and then we have this dude walking along like this. Now these props, like I mentioned, are animatable. Uh, they can be animated, so let's right click on these ears, go to the action menu, and select tiger ears loop. And you can see they kind of wiggle a little bit. And press F3 and go into the timeline there. There's tiger ears, we can just kind of loop that as many times as we want and you can see we have the ears kind of just wiggling like that very subtle wiggle back and forth and you can do the same thing with the whiskers in this case it's called tiger beard we have the motion track here and at frame one we can right click action menu and tiger beard loop and you can see those will kind of bounce up and down as our character walks along so you can see the whiskers bouncing up and down Cool. All right. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, do a final touch here. Let's select our character and go to the sprite editor. I'm going to just change his eyes to big old cat eyes here. It's like this. There we go. And then we can change his mouth to a nice, happy, open cat mouth. Make sure you do this at frame one, by the way. All right. And then here we have our uh, furry dude just walking along with his tail, happy as can be. All right, so that's how you can really just attach animated props to your character and uh, animate them, uh, link them to your character and everything like that. So that's really about all there is for this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, check out the other CTA3 tutorials on our YouTube channel and our forums at forum.reillusion.com as well. And I'll see you in the next video.